Hi Mukize, how are you doing? What's good, Baba? Doing right, Sha. What do you say? Not bad, not bad, man. Not yeah. bad. <laughs> Tired, but you know, <laughs> grateful. Exhausted. Yeah. But we had we had to find a way to do this somehow. We did, we did. <laughs> thank you so much for, you. for yeah. coming through. No, thank you for um, having me, man. Weird trend. Uh, the last time I interviewed you, 2019, it was also in October. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like October is a good time for us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you are one of the most popular comedians in Zim at the moment. Um, my fascination usually is where it started, how it started, why it started. And because a career in comedy is unorthodox. Mm. Everywhere in the world, <laughs> yeah. worse more in Zim, right? Um, what made you realize there could be an opportunity, and this is something that you wanted to pursue? I think for me, it started with realizing that whatever I was doing wasn't meant for me, and then started the pursuit. I was studying law, yeah, and then starting the pursuit. Uh, after realizing like, oh, this might not necessarily. <laughs> You know, I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't one of those kids that was, you know, staying up late to study cases and case law and this and that. Um, prior to that, you know, first year, second year, you kind of like, you know, breezing through whatever. Then it gets to a point where you have to apply yourself. <laughs> and I wasn't applying myself. So, yeah. you know, I would find myself on YouTube getting caught up in vines. and all. But I didn't even know that this was... a career this was because being funny was a thing that i'd always been told uh, or oh, like people were saying you're a funny guy yeah it's something that like since i could remember conversations i guess like from high school or yeah. like, being funny was just i thought it was a character trait so not necessarily something not ne <laughs> yeah so i started trying to find oh what is it that i'm good at then you know one person i guess i was making them laugh said oh, you should do stand-up comedy that's when Light bulb. Like, oh. <laughs> hmm. You know. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So that's what ignited that particular path. And, you know, I ended up trying to figure this out and I realized like, oh snap, I really enjoy this. And I haven't looked back since then. Yeah, that was like, 2015. Here we are, yeah. seven years later. Um, so the interesting thing there is you're doing law, which is a very orthodox path, uh, yeah. a path that will make 99% of African parents very proud. Yes. So I'm wondering, <laughs> oh, no, no. how did they take that? Like yeah. this guy's, especially from what, from what I'm getting is, yeah. you actually didn't know what you were going to do. Yeah. You just stopped. Yeah, I just, I, I stopped way, way, way before I figured out. It was actually crazy. But, you know, it almost felt like, being suffocated, which is very unusual because all these things are like, <laughs> like, you know, you, you, you grow up in the ghetto, you're supposed to be, you know, you are at a fancy school on a scholarship. Where were you on? I was at Rhodes. Ooh, uh, okay. Yeah, you're at a fancy yeah. school on a scholarship. You're supposed to be, you know, grateful to be yeah, here. Yeah, you're supposed to appreciate yeah, that so, opportunity. But, you know, I think... Looking back, nothing in my life that had ever happened in my life was, you know, straightforward. And I guess this, that was the last thing that I did because I think that was kind of like, uh, I'd always wanted to be, I don't know if this need to be unique superseded the need to find myself <laughs> or I don't know what yeah. came first. But yeah, I think it's because everything that I've done since then, I've kind of like tried to do. Pretty groundbreaking stuff. I wouldn't put it that way. I wouldn't put it that way. I wouldn't put it that way. But yeah, I, I would. I, I mean, it's true. I mean, it's, I mean, it's true. But, but um, I, I, everything that I've done so far is kind of like I've tried to work within. It's not like I'm going out of my way to, you know, make headlines. I've tried to work with what is there to work with, you know, doing comedy the right way yeah. you know the way that the greats have kind of like you know done it so that's what i've tried to do fair enough man um and so i came to your show um last year you're right uh your parents are very proud 
<laughs> they were I there mean, and they were very proud. I mean, it's making money now. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I want to talk <laughs> about. Is, like, how long did it take for for them to come around and understand? Because even though it is with my funnies, like, it actually, Jesus with my funnies. It actually didn't take long. Uh, I think oh, about that's it. interesting. Yeah, it didn't take long. No, because the disadvantage that everybody had with regards to this is I'm a planner. Man, like have the things like none. <laughs> n there is absolutely nothing that has happened specifically ever since I started doing comedy. Nothing yeah. has been accidental. Maybe you know. Uh, sometimes you know God will go out of His way to throw me an alley whoop that yeah. I didn't expect. Yeah. <laughs> but like usually, me and God, you know, are working <laughs> hand in hand. The frequencies. You know, I would tell him like, "Hey, man, this is what I need." And you know, he usually delivers. You know, write, write. <laughs> I've, I've always written down, like, yo, I want to do this. Even this Celebration Center show, this has been in the working since 2019. Mm, you know? I like that. So I've always tried to visualize where I want my life to go, and I've always tried to put the right steps to get to that point. Ah, uh, um, so they couldn't. They couldn't stop you because... So, exactly. So, <laughs> I'm saying that to say, by the time I left Rhodes, I had a plan. Yeah. You know, because I knew the pressure of dropping out of a law school, I couldn't do, <laughs> you know, higi haga stuff. So, I was like, yo, I'm going to go to Zim, I'm going to try manufacture, bump into this guy, because I know this guy is kind of important, so I need this guy to give me a job. And the moment I get a job... Um, half my problems go away because so, I'll have the salary, <laughs> you know. So I think for my parents, it, it took it took about it took about a year when there was no money coming in. And by the yeah. end of that year, I'd got an internship, you know, uh, at Magamba, which is a civic society and they, you know, incredible guys when it comes to SATA. And I wanted to be in that space to learn yeah. how SATA is done properly. So I started as an intern, then I became a production assistant, then I ended up running, you know, the Magamba TV project. By that time, you know, we are talking real money. Yeah. So, you know, I was, you know, the moment you Less come, questions. Yeah, the moment you come back <laughs> home with, you know, two paper bags, you pick and pay, questions stop coming. They're like, hey, man. Do you leave, mean? Leave him alone. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 so that's, that's. That's how I played it, but you know, it was it wasn't a very comfortable for about a year. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was not a comfortable home at <laughs> all because you know, every time I saw a dweller lying around, you know, I would steal it. So <laughs> for what for transport or yeah, because I was whatever. broke. Yeah, ever, when I came back from Rhodes, people were like, "Hey, you think you're a big man?" Ah, yeah. so yeah, you might yeah, as well like, find your way. Figure it out. You want yeah, since you want to be clever, you know, yeah. you, you be Fair clever. Enough. So, you know, I was ramaging the house, you know, dollar here, dollar, people, you know, were afraid to leave my, their wallets around. So, Yo, but, you know, tough. yeah, that but it only awkward. emboldened the resolve to make this work. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm very grateful. I, uh, you know, so many incredible people were put onto my path and they, you know, helped me along the way, gave me a leg up and I honestly wouldn't be where I am. Without, today without okay. you know quite a few people yeah that's that's fantastic so we've solved we've we've solved the the dropout issue we've yeah. solved the convincing parents issue we're now yeah. on that path right um uh i'm gonna skip saturday in the morning right like i said before <laughs> <laughs> i feel like you you've been asked that question way too Ooh. many times yeah <laughs> i'm yeah. gonna skip to a a much more interesting point of your career, which was yeah. uh, Prodigal Son last year. Right. Um, fair to say that was the first time you did something that big and that complex. Is that a fair assumption? Uh, first time was Conspiracy Theories, uh, 2019, Rex Theater. That was it. Was on that scale as well? Because yeah, I watched that on 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 YouTube. It wasn't on the same scale, um, yeah. numbers wise. Uh, I think. Reps only fit like 450 people. Yeah. Um, seven which is, was which like, is, still, which is yeah. still like a lot of I people. I mean, it's still a lot of people because, <laughs> you know, no one has been able to do that ever yeah. since, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
Talking so, shit. <laughs> so, we, so we did uh, Seven Arts, which was, you know, trying to better that. But the two are not even comparable in terms of, like, just subject matter. You know? So maybe let me hold you yeah. there. Because I had skipped conspiracy theories, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and let's approach it this way. Mm. What are then the complexities you meet? Because at this point, you're actually becoming a household name. Um, right. You had been doing satire for four years. Yeah. Since 2015, yeah, 2015 yeah. to 19. Mm. Um, what then do you get surprised by going into that experience? Because this is now different from, what, from everything else you've done up until that point. I think the biggest thing with conspiracy theories was just realizing what goes into writing a like a stand-up show, like yeah. how how much work actually goes into setting that up, like from an admin perspective, actually, you know, talking to a venue, talking to... Oh, because artists. you're running point yeah. and you're writing. Yeah, yeah. you have, <laughs> like, you have the vision of what you want to yeah. be achieved, right? So you have to actually, you know, sort of like, yeah, I want this to look like this, I want this to, like, even from a filming perspective like the camera guys yeah the camera guys i want you know if somebody can stand here and then from a content perspective i'm going to enter to this song i'm going to say this this yeah. i'm going to walk out to this song you know and because of the moment sometimes a good portion of those things don't happen the way that you think they're going to happen because yeah. you're caught up in the moment of 450 <laughs> people saying Ooh, you know it's an amazing moment a lot of it's such things, a, it's, it's a crazy know, thing takes a lot <laughs> to calm you down and you know but yeah, it was an incredible experience and it was a vindication of like, hey man, this is really what I'm supposed to be doing because, you know, uh, a lot of misgivings, but never about the actual show because, you know, incredible, incredible experience. Yeah. yeah. The, fair enough. And, and I hear that because like you're saying, man, um, <laughs> one of, I talk to entrepreneurs a lot and, and one of the things they tell me is um, one thing about success mm is like you don't do things for validation right but once once you like reach a a certain level of success mm. it like emboldens you yeah like now like you're unhinged you're like what what can we what's like the next step but let me actually put it like a little caveat yeah like with comedy you absolutely do things for validation <laughs> <laughs> well i mean fair enough yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with comedy the first thing you want <laughs> Before it anything is else is the value because the positive validation. Yeah, you, you want it's a very attention seeking genre. Like it's I'm 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 self aware enough to acknowledge that part. Like it's every single comedian is an attention seeker. Yeah. Have every, you bombed before? Single, like you fire jokes away and so, just people just don't feel it. So there's different kind of there's different kinds of bombing. Like, yeah. Right? There's bombing like when you started comedy, when things are not... When you're just not that you, good. So, it's, a, it's a complicated because yeah. the thing with comedians, right? Yeah. Is that it's not so much that somebody's not that good, but it's because they might not have the fundamentals down to your T. Of yeah. that require... The, like the jokes themselves will be good, premise-wise. Yeah. But like this person doesn't know how to perform the joke. Okay. Right? They don't know that. They don't know how to leave the gaps. They don't know how to drop the punchline. They don't know how to create the suspense. So it's not so much that the person is not good. It's the performance that is not good. Right? Ooh, never so, thought of yeah. that. Yeah. So the, because if that person, like, when you look at me, right? Yeah. I don't believe somebody can say there was a time where I wasn't good at comedy. Yeah. Because I cannot <laughs> then be this good now. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And that's the thing with comedy. It's either you're good at it or you oh, yeah. you don't get... Like, the things that you get better at are the performance part, the little nuances. Like, you don't get better at being funny. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like that. You don't get better at being... It's either you're funny or you're not. You're hurting me, man. I was, I was going to, like, try some things. But <laughs> yeah. <I'm>, <laughs> so, so, so it starts from that point of arrogance of saying, like, yo, I'm funny yeah. enough. The performance part, so the bombing, like, initially, there's that bombing where... People are not laughing at what you're saying because maybe the delivery is good. You're or maybe anxious. you're just not funny. Yeah, you're, you're anxious. And then there's yeah. the bombing when you are actually a good comedian, right? That bombing is also two-part because sometimes it's because 
you are not getting the laugh that you want. Like people are laughing, but they're laughing at the wrong thing. Do you get what I mean? <laughs> like people will come at a no, show. You have to explain this to me. Yeah. So certain <clears throat> people, right? If you go to a Kevin Hart show, yeah. right? Because this Kevin Hart, there is no way yeah. you're not going to laugh yeah. during the show, yeah. right? Because, but you might then say the show wasn't that good. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like you go to a Dave Chappelle show and you say, it wasn't like, he was funny, but, but like, you know, but not... <laughs> even, so from, from an audience perspective, but he might say, I didn't have a good night. Yeah. Right? People were laughing, but like, maybe he forgot a few lines that would have taken it an extra edge. Maybe. So it exists in different pockets where there's the obvious one where people are just not laughing. Yeah. It's just not your night. So awkward. Maybe you're drunk. Maybe you know, <laughs> you you know, there there could be different reasons. Maybe you're just not in the right headspace. Maybe you know things are bad. Maybe you know. Imagine somebody trying to perform comedy the day the coup happened. You know, the country is not there. You are not yeah. there. But the tickets have already been bought. You know, <laughs> you have to deliver the show. Have to deliver the show because they paid. Their yeah, day. and there's a disconnect. So different things happen. Yeah, 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 that would definitely be awkward because yeah, people half the time they're on their phones exactly. trying to understand. Or trying to perform. Imagine if Zimbabwe had lost yesterday. Right? Oh yeah, the cricket. Yeah, right? so imagine yeah, trying yeah. to perform to at a at Ooh, a cricket club. That's a where, very you know. That's a very interesting intangible because yeah. if if someone was performing yesterday, yeah, they've got that. You know, plus every, two everybody is in a good mood. <laughs> the so show's what, already a exactly, four out of ten. Whatever, you exactly. <laughs> everybody's in a good mood. Yeah. So these are the different things that go into, you know, these are the different, like, comedy is such an, uh, it's such a difficult art form because beyond the content that you've written, so many things have to go well. Yeah. Like the lighting, the mood, the DJ, the guy that performs before you. The weather outside, you know these yep. little these little things. <laughs> so many things just so add many up to things. how I and feel when exactly. I walk in. So you are praying, you are praying that everything has <laughs> gone. But even when things haven't gone well, you are praying that your jokes are still good enough to bring people. You know, so it's a lot of pressure, man. It's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna go into two things, um, <clears throat> especially that pressure because one. Um, it seems either I'm just like a very anxious person, mm. but it does seem like there's a lot of a vulnerability. Like the the, yeah. the, the aspect we are talking about where you're laying yourself bare. Yeah. Uh, and it's not like music where if you if you have the voice, you have the yeah. voice. Like it's just so yeah. certain, right? Yeah. But you might just give your all and then people are just like, yo, this guy is just yeah. he's not the one. How do you how did you approach that? I feel like are you better off now in terms of like anxiety and putting yourself in like the best head space going into a show or are there things that you do are you you know like like soccer players are like so superstitious they'll do some weird thing yeah. they'll tie their shoelaces in a certain way I mean I match. do have I, I do have little things that I I do have little things that I would do like yeah I need to hear this I like, need the bro, secret sauce <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm huge on taking showers before uh, I like like everything that I'm everything that I'm it needs to be super clean like I need so to, before the workout, yeah, like <laughs> like an hour, like everything, like I'm whatever. So I'm very big on whatever I'm wearing, right? I can't just throw on whatever. No casual dressing. You're very specific. Even, so even the casual dressing, it's it so needs to be well thought out, <laughs> right? To the to the point of, it can't be accidental because for me it's like. Uh, I don't. It's not so much superstition. Yeah. It's actually nothing to do with superstition, but. I feel like the better I feel, right? The more, the more, like if the clothes are looking nice and I feel, like, Ooh, out. <laughs> yeah, like if I feel like, oh, this is a nice fit, I'm going to be confident before, yeah. you know, regardless of what happens. If I enter that space on some, oh, I, I feel nice, I feel fresh. Yeah. So even if I just showered three hours before, <laughs> I need to shower at least <laughs> thirty minutes before the show. <laughs> It doesn't matter. Yo, this sounds like it's, crazy. It's, it's like a complete <laughs> reset of like, oh, because the thing also like with being on stage is that you're going to sweat. Yeah. From this, so bad. trying to minimize that, trying to minimize that bad. sweat. Yeah. So because the lights are going to be in and your I face assume and, you're also sweating whilst you set up, like the moment you get to the venue and you're oh, setting stage, stuff up. People are set up. 
set up for you, man. Like if you are still, oh. <laughs> like yeah, if you are still selling out, you can't can't be selling out clothes and selling up <laughs> your own PA system. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. But in my defense, yeah, this is Zimbabwe. I've, I've seen crazier shit True. happen. No, you 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 you're very right. You're very right. But yeah, so it's 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 not so much anxiety. It's yeah. it's more like nerves, right? It's like being aware, and for me, nerves are very important because I'm like, the moment I don't, I feel too relaxed. I'm like, yeah, this is not going to go well. <laughs> so I feel like being nervous keeps me on my toes. Yeah, you know, it keeps me wanting to give whoever is paid for the best show possible. So I'm nervous as like, hell. Can I deliver? Thirty like, minutes, me... probably sometimes the whole day. You know, like yo. I mean, fair enough, man. I yeah, it's an understandable thing. Um, in the example of uh, seven, seven arts. Yeah. How many people were there? Uh, you I think like eight hundred and something. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was a. It was a ridiculous number. I was surprised. Yeah, I was, was like, what? It was. This a is, yeah, it was. This is crazy. Considering it was also <laughs> COVID, or oh, we we it broke was, so many rules. Yeah. I can say it now because I think the COVID statute of limitations. <laughs> But yeah, um, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's it was a, it was a good number. It was a good number. It was a it was a good way to end what had been otherwise a terrible year. Yeah, you know, in terms of like just the pandemic wise, you know, it was a, it was I think, you know, we we didn't sell out the whole thing because of those COVID restrictions. Yeah, yeah. But to see people come out like that, you know, was yeah. also like, hey man. People have been, you know, cooped up in the house. You know, they want to come out. So we, whatever we have to deliver has to be special has to be enough to justify people. Like imagine coming out. Yeah. You know, people risk all that and be like, oh, man, I could have. Like, like two weeks later, you're like, man, did you COVID? Yeah. For what? You know, for exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it was. I'm, 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 I'm grateful. It went you the, know, way, it the way that it was intended to have gone. Yeah, because <clears throat> I'll tell you this, man. I am, and 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 this is like a this is a thing you hear a lot, I assume. Mm. But I am like a big Kanduro fan. Like mm. from I was interviewing you in in twenty nineteen. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I, I do need to ask you this: Was yeah. I the first person to interview you, or I was I was a, I was a bit late? No, uh, fortunately, there's always been some kind of interest in my story. Yeah. Uh, since his early, I think the first first interview. Yeah. I remember must have been like in 2016. Ooh. Uh, I was massively late. <laughs> but there was a <laughs> there was a guy called who had a blog called his name was Eno. Uh, uh, is it? It was. It was. Uh, Zimbosan. Exactly. Zimbo yeah, he's San. a he's a fantastic guy. I only yeah. got to know him recently, but yeah, yeah, he was the. You, I think. He I was. think he was the first guy to interview me. That's fantastic. I'll I tell him to, to watch to, this. I'm yeah. sure he'll love I'll, it. Yeah, I would have to check, but I think <laughs> incredible. It was it was an incredible feeling being asked, you know, to do that. It was it was You're like what me? Yeah, because <laughs> also at that time, you know, a lot of things are going through your head. You're not. Oh, certain and it's still if people, within that first year yeah, you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, because I just left school in 2015, and 2016 was like the first full year we were doing this. So, yeah. you know, we're doing Kumenya Madurofia on YouTube. So, you know, you don't know whether people are seeing you. So, you know, this guy reaches out and like, hey. Let's do this. You know, let's do this. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm game. And we, 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 we do it. And it was a brilliant piece. And I would have to check if... Uh, if I have my facts right, but I I believe that well, was the first that's one. what the record is saying. Yeah, right I, now. Believe, I believe I believe that was. The, I believe Interestingly that was enough, man, since 2019, I've I've been priding myself, saying mm. I am the one who did it first. Um, <laughs> it's it's funny the yeah. world works like that, and it's yeah. given me so much confidence. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, and and you should keep that confidence. You should keep that confidence because, I think. Even 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 prior, right? Yeah. My thing, even with interviews now, is that it's gotten to a point where some of the questions will even be repetitive. But my thing with, like, when I receive questions or when somebody asks me, it's like, you know, I love people who try, find new ways to ask you the same thing. Yeah. You know, uh, not just a blank, oh, so when did you start comedy? Yeah. <laughs> Why? 
It's like a certain script. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and for me, it's the, the thing with that is that because I've done these interviews before, it's almost disrespectful to me, disrespectful to yourself that yeah. you, you, didn't could even... have, you could have looked it up. Right, yeah. so it seems like the question now becomes like, why are we doing this in the first place? It's work because that's been done. I refuse to believe that there's somebody looking up an article to find out when I started doing this. But if it comes with a, you know, caveat of you know an extra question beyond that, yeah. Or so when like, what was the thought process when like things like that? I'm like, okay, you're making it different from the from from the you know, and it's more specific to what you need. So yeah, it's it's it it. it Th that skill is what I appreciate. Yeah, fair enough, man. And yeah. that's our King Kandoro badge of approval. <laughs> 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 but let's let's get back to it. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I was going to ask you is, um, at a writing standpoint, mm. because I I think people don't understand how much goes into it. Because I remember there's mm. a there's a live you did uh, mm. last year, if I'm not mistaken, mm. before. Uh, prodigal son mm. where you just had a bunch of uh, about 2015 people come in and be like mm. yo guys I've been writing this thing yeah, yeah. you pay my jokes you pay my jokes and yeah. it was just like a funny impromptu thing yeah, right yeah, yeah. Uh, but people don't appreciate how much work pen wise yeah. goes into Ooh. a comedy special and I suppose I am one of those because yeah I have never talked to a comedian yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's, what's that process like for you? it's um I just write as it comes. So, as soon as I felt like, you know, Prodigal Sun had run its course, I'd yeah. started running certain things that didn't fit necessarily in the. So, you know, for me, it's sometimes I'll just write a premise, like, oh, I think this would be funny. And sometimes the premise comes to me as strongly as like a fully formed, oh, okay, this is what I think is funny, and these are the words to accompany it. And I just write it and then you know i start developing it as i go trying yeah. to make it part of a larger story trying to make it more seamless and i think that's that's the difficult part you know that's the difficult part at this point what i'm trying to do is just trying to write funny stuff not funny zimbabwean stuff not funny african stuff yeah. it's just <laughs> universally funny things um just trying to prepare myself or when we get to that stage where the audience is not predominantly Zimbabwe, Zim. you know, yeah. uh, I don't want to be caught napping and say like, oh, I wasn't ready yeah. for this adjustment, but uh, which is what, you know, when we're doing the show in essay was for, because in essay, in as much as, you know, the audience was predominantly Zimbabwe and there were people that were coming up with, be... you know, other partners, their partners that are not Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. So, even if it was one person who had come, I still want that person to walk away yeah. feeling like they were part of the show. Yeah, yeah, because if it yeah. then becomes an inside joke. Exactly. So, so well. the language has to be universal, you know, which yeah. means could you, any of the Shona stuff that we are saying is improv. It's not actually written. It's just we get to a moment where something makes sense, yeah. but there's nothing written that is Shona in the script. But if the moment, like, you know, you're having fun with the audience and then some random word just comes out, yeah. <laughs> we just go with we it. go with it. But it's not too much such that it alienates somebody who doesn't, yeah. you know, understand Shona. It's enough that they can get a quick... They can understand. Yeah, they can understand from the context. They can also get a quick interpretation from whoever they came with. Like, oh, this is what it means. This is what it means. And, yeah. you know, it doesn't take away from their understanding of the show. So, yeah, it's 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 a... It's a pretty daunting process because when you're writing, you're like, you know, as we are writing from a place of arrogance, of whatever, <laughs> like, this is funny. Yeah. You know, but you don't know whether it will translate to, you know, the next person, whether they will relate to whatever you think is funny. So when you actually get that reaction when people are like, hey, man, like, That's wild. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's a very nice feeling. And then in terms of, um, because I used to be a journalist. Um, All right. We used to write a lot. What do you mean you used to? This is journalism, isn't it? This it, it is, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm still a media practitioner. Yeah. Yeah. But when I say that, and, yeah. and, and thank you for catching me there. When yeah. I say that, because I've said that so many times and probably not yeah. pointed it out specifically, yeah. I mean my writing days right. uh, when I used to write at, yeah. at, at TechSim. Um, one, writer's block. Yeah. 
and two monotony in that. Yeah. You're like, yo, I, I just don't have it. Yeah. Because the thing with creativity is, <clears throat> I don't know, man, it's like a gift and a curse. Mm. Um, as much as you feel in control of the gift, yeah. sometimes it feels like tap, you know, go that one. Yeah. And you have nothing. What's, what's that? Is, do you go through like, stuff like that? Or, and do you have like, hacks for stuff like that? Or for you, you take it as it comes? I don't know if I've experienced writer's blog in, in the sense of what I've seen it to be. Yeah. Uh, there are times where I just feel un uninspired. Right? Where yeah. Like, <laughs> but the thing with me is that I try to keep myself busy enough that uh, even when I'm uninspired to write stand up, I'm writing propaganda. <laughs> or I'm doing the oh, podcast. Mkoma Bruce. Or I'm doing Koma Bruce. Okay, so fair enough. Those things end up intersecting. That like there's never a time when I'm actually like You're dry. Uh, like not so much dry, but like there's nothing that I'm doing. Do you get what I mean? So yeah those things end up picking themselves up because with Mkoma Bruce, it's like I find ways to incorporate the stand-up or I'll find new ways to say something that I've been struggling to see or a premise of a joke starts as a very serious propaganda topic, right? And then while doing propaganda, because it's a very serious show, yeah. um, we're like, oh, okay, let me find a creative way of saying this same thing, but as stand-up. So... It's like, I don't know if that would be called a hack, because, but it sounds, because it sounds like just too much work for one person. But yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's what I do. I've, I've always tried to keep myself busy. I've always tried to, you know, challenge myself creatively. Like, oh, okay, let's exist in different boxes. So that the thinking behind that was, I don't want anyone to ever put me in a box like, ah, oh, can't run do my skits, you yeah. know, or can't run do a podcast, or can't run do a stand-up. Everything yeah. really was designed to feed into the stand-up. cut across. Yeah. But ah, really, it feeds. it feeds into the stand-up. So... Yo, that's so particular. Yeah, everything that I've done has been... The podcast was designed to help me train my brain to think quickly enough of something funny. Yeah. Because when you're recording live, it's like, you know, somebody, you are, that energy is like, okay, you know, you're supposed to reef off immediately. And, Just you know, your brain, hold yeah, on to people like exactly. That, yeah. And then, so that initial thing that you just randomly say, the moment you say it and the other person says it's funny or they laugh, you're like, oh, can I develop this into yeah. a bit? Or can I develop this into a stronger point? Yeah. Right? So even, 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 even the skits, even the whatever, they were supposed to bring attention to like, oh, this guy is funny. When we announce a show, it's not a surprise. Because the thing with stand-up is, Ideally, for a comedian, no one is supposed to come to a show trying to find out if I'm funny. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You're supposed to it's come to the show already <laughs> aware that I'm funny. Expecting exactly. that I'm going to have a good night. Because if I'm trying to convince you I'm funny at a show, it's an uphill task. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a very, very uphill. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the idea with all these little skits is trying to raise, you know, you know, visibility that like, oh, I've seen this guy, you're like, oh, I've, funniest guy I've, you know, I've seen this <laughs> I guy, love you this know, guy. Yeah. those kind of things, you know, with propaganda now, it's trying to legitimize yourself as a thinker yeah. to say, when you come to a stand-up show, I don't want to my stand-up show, yeah. I don't want you to be surprised when I go into those deep, ridiculous conspiracy theories because... Yeah. You've had me go off that tangent on propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> so you legitimize yourself as a thinker and you see like, okay, there's some thought that this guy is giving. It's not just he's not, he's it's not, not just, just you know. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, not Yeah, because that's also a very exact, easy thing. Yeah, it's not just the it's not just because you know, those, guys, those guys guys write some of those jokes as exactly. well. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 trying to it's it, everything has existed in a different pocket to try to elevate to the stand-up and yeah yeah that's interesting and from from what you said there <clears throat> and with propaganda um because being a creative especially in the domain you're in mm. and this is an assumption on my part so please do correct me if i'm wrong people could condescend you is that like a fair thing to say it's like yeah he's a funny guy yeah but beyond that yeah. 
It's yeah. almost like people like eat a joke. I, I don't know how to put it into words. <laughs> oh, condescend it. Like it's 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 part of the game, and you just have to take it in your stride. It's something that I've refused to take in my stride. Uh, I think the the the, the first beat of condescension is people saying the whole the assumption that being funny is easy or like writing jokes yeah. or performing comedy is easy um so that part forces you to try and be as successful as you can uh to show that there is a difference because oh. you know so you try <laughs> as much to challenge yourself because if everybody thinks they can do it it's like okay so why can't you do it you know yeah Go do it. <laughs> and while you're doing it, try to replicate these numbers. Yeah, try do it to at the level we're do doing. Do it at that level. So, you know, uh, I've, 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 I haven't experienced a lot of it. Um, I have experienced it, but I haven't experienced a lot of it because I'm a very arrogant person. Yeah. Uh, very, 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 very. <laughs> it's, 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 I'm a very, very, like, I'm, it takes very little to see, like, hey, this guy is, this guy is very arrogant. Like, half the things that I've done have just been from a point of... Like like I said, like just from the point of choosing this as a profession, that's arrogance. Yeah. Because there's a different level of just self-belief that is required it, it, it to takes. say, I'm funny enough for you guys to pay for this. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Because yeah. every human being believes they have a decent sense of humor. Yeah. But oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Everyone, we say like, <laughs> yeah. oh, what, I'm what, funny. I'm what, open-minded. What, is, what, what, <laughs> what do you like about yourself? Like, oh, I have a great sense of humor. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> but having great sense of humor and being able to pay those different levels. to make people pay you for having it is a different level mm-hmm. of arrogance. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> just starting from that point, it's, it's, it's. <clears throat> I have created these things that kind of like work as a fail safe for people trying to get into my face with, even if they wanted to. I, I you, you try can't. to create my space <laughs> in a way that, you know, it's, 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 you really have to be, I don't know, man, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, for, so you mean like for someone to even get close enough to you? Yeah, to, it, 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 it's, I try it's really to, impossible. Yeah, I try to keep, I mean, from, like on social media, you will see, like you can't protect yourself from social yeah. media. And like like yeah. in real life, uh, you know, I've, I've, I have a close group of friends, uh, you know, who don't care about what I do. I mean, to, <laughs> to, to, to them, I'm just a guy they went to high school with. Yeah. Everything else is just... <laughs> Secondary. It's just, it's just noise, <laughs> really. I mean, they are, they, you know, they will tell me like, hey, we're proud of you, boy, but like, that's not a thing to them. I'm just yeah. their guy. To them. It's, I'm just... It's, it's the same pride you'd have for them in their yeah, career. Exactly. So it helps me <coughs> in that sense to keep me grounded because we are not talking about we are not talking about me selling out. Yeah, it's not numbers. Like, you know, <laughs> you know, it, it, these are guys that will show up for me. You know, uh, anytime I need them to, but they are not on YouTube saying chaka nyanyam dara. You know, they are not yeah. they are not doing that. Yeah. They're like, why do I have to, man, why do I have to do this? You know what? For me as a YouTuber, um that irritates me so much. But I also like yeah. get it. Yeah. Because the people closest to me, yeah. I know what they do for me. They don't yeah. have yeah, to yeah, yeah. they don't have to game the algorithm for no, me no, 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 as no. well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, 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 I love that. I love that. Um so we're going to get into Mukoma Bruce and then propaganda and yeah. round off because, yeah. like you said, it's been a long day for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's been a long week for me because for the first time I've shot like um, three days in a row whilst oh. editing something that's coming out. Yeah. Um, good problem to have. Right. Yeah, it's a very good problem to have. <laughs> but let's talk about Mukoma Bruce because you gave this to us in 2022. And <clears throat> for the sake of people who are watching this and who don't know, mm. We need to talk about like how quickly these things happen because mm. we, were to- we were talking about Prodigal Son. That was December last year. Mm. Uh, you were still doing a, uh, a couple of shows after that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dubai was after that, yeah, if I'm not Dubai mistaken. Was after that, yeah. um, six months, June is six months after the mm. year begins. You gave us Mukoma Bruce. Mm. What particularly, the question I had as a fan when mm. that came out. 
scale. Why? You know, this sounds insane because this guy's been working all along. Yeah. In fact, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you came down to shoot for Mkoma Bruce's when we were supposed to uh, have the interview, but it was just, yeah, the schedule it was, was just, it was just, it was just, was just impossible. It, was, yeah. it, it couldn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And the question I had was, when did the idea for that come to you? Mm. And what's the phase between ideation and the cameras rolling? Like, what's that timeline oh, like? The Mkoma Bruce's was very long. I think oh, for first, real? Yeah, the first idea was like, the first idea was like 20, it was just a silly tweet, like 2018, yeah. just thinking about, you know, the, the, the premise of being a superhero and how hard it would be for me to keep that quiet and trying to be humble. <laughs> and, you know, it just spiraled from there because, you know, people were laughing at the tweet. I was like, huh, this would be a, you know, funny spoof of a, you know, superhero character. And yeah. You know, at the time, it sounded like an expensive idea to do. Um, so we just tabled it. I think 2019, what was it, 2018, 2019, I must have, 2018, yeah. I think. And yeah, man, it, it just, uh, it, it never left my mind. Uh, 2021 is when I started, actually, is when I wrote the pilot yeah. for the, you know, sent it to a few of my guys. I was like, hey, this is funny. And I pitched it to Shumba Mani. They liked it. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, uh, I pitched it to them in January of 2020. January they, of this year? Yeah. And they it's said, been a long year, man. Yeah, and they <laughs> said, yeah, let's do it. And so came down in... So I guess from writing scripts in terms of like actually writing scripts, yeah. it wasn't more than six months. Yeah, because I think I wrote the pilot in October last year. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got around to filming it and ex pitching it and then filming it uh, earlier this year. But yeah, it was a fun idea to do. Is there anything that surprised you during that shoot? How I don't have patience to do all that. That's the thing that surprised me a lot. I realized like <laughs> my... That's a very fair thing to say. My creativity <laughs> exists in a... Because uh, I, I think... <clears throat> what, if, what frustrated you? Not so much frustration, but yeah. respect for what actors do. Because oh. yeah, because these talents exist in different ways. Yeah, being an actor and being a comedian are two different things, and yeah. most people think the two can interlap. If you look at Mukoma Bruce, half the guys on that production are actual actors. Yep, like they do theater production, serious guys. So the level of preparation that goes into them executing those characters. I was just showing up on set, man. Like, <laughs> if I wasn't the guy that wrote that show... You had no business I had no being, business being any there. Any to, yeah. <laughs> so they would, like, they would be doing, like... Like, I, I would write these scripts and they would come back with notes and additions to, like, oh, I think this would sound better. And, yeah, it did. <laughs> you know, it sounded better because they knew because what they... You know, they knew that's, their, uh, that's, that's what, their thing. So that's what I realized is like, because, you know, I think most people will be like, oh, that transition from being a comedian to being an actor, I have no interest yeah. in doing that. I have <laughs> no interest in that transition whatsoever. <laughs> because the level of preparation that goes into that, you have to treat it. Maybe my opinion about this will change, but I don't think it will. Because I really love the same way that I don't believe. Anyone can just show up on stage and do. It's the same way that I realized, like, nobody can. I mean, I, I probably cheated my way into it because of, you know, minimal skit <laughs> acting. But, like, I yeah. realized, like, I can do comedy sketches because I can go in and out of characters. You know, I can do Comrade Ambura, I can do Papa Dabu Dabu. Yep. <laughs> but to do that for episodes, you know, to stay in and one single are, character... Yeah. For episodes, I don't have the patience to do that. And you, you're having to check yourself for like inconsistencies. Exactly. Because episode one, you did this. Now you can't exactly. do it again in like eight. And you know, so those yeah. kind of things were yeah. like yeah. it was an incredible learning experience, and I'm glad it happened that way because I was like, okay, okay, you know, walked away <laughs> feeling a different kind of respect. Yeah. For, it it you humbles know. you. In a yeah, sense. it does. It does. But but I do like what you said there in that <clears throat> one. Um, 
no one gets to do the things that you or people in your profession get to do overnight. Yeah. No one gets to do the things that actors do yeah. overnight. Like we have this tendency. I won't call it a Zim tendency yeah. because yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm yeah. exposed to. Right? Yeah. Uh, but we have this tendency. <clears throat> Yeah, go under it, as you know, especially yes. in the context of art, man, where yes. uh, maybe because our palette has been exposed to so many other things, yeah. we, we think things are easy, especially at a, like an executional level. Like, yes. You're like, I, I could do that too. And it's like, mm, wangu, no. No, you can <laughs> no, <laughs> Have you some can. respect. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for, for, for mentioning that, right? Even the, even, even the, most, even the most terrible comedian that you find on a night, yep. you couldn't do what they're doing. Because <laughs> the fact that they are up there already separates you from, from them. them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Rosiana, yeah, yeah, it takes a lot of guts just to walk <laughs> to up walk on that up stage and do that. <laughs> and do that. It takes a different level of guts. So yeah. when people be like, ah, so-and-so sucks, I saw them, and like... I, I especially hate that. You man. know, it's like... like it's one thing to not like something. Exactly. I hate it when people go out of their way to try to influence other people from not liking a certain yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's just exactly. Just because you don't like... It's, it's, it's like, that. It's like, fair <laughs> enough, you don't like this kind of guy. Fair enough, he doesn't do anything for you. But to go out of your way, four or five tweets, I don't see yeah. what you guys... Especially, like, especially on Twitter, there's this... Um, I, it comes with the territory because people go there to think, yeah. but... Uh, I don't know, man. Like, have some respect. Um, yeah, man. Have some respect. I think there's something I experienced a lot in, 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 in journalism where yeah. you're seeing, like, how much time it takes to, to get a story and then someone is like, um, this is ill-prepared and, and you're like, oh, that's an interesting... That's well, an interesting take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you also... I think that's also a very interesting thing in that... There is a balance, um, yeah. and, and tell me what you think of this, in that you have to let some feed back in. Absolutely. But you also have to Absolutely. balance what kind of feedback you take in. What, what, what's that like for you? I mean, what's feedback you, you, you take in and feedback you're like, okay, this is nonsense. I mean, I've tried to, I've tried, uh, I mean, the stuff that I, the stuff that I try to not take seriously is people telling me, how to do what I do, because yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, first of all, you don't actually know what I was trying to do, yeah. you know? You don't actually know. <laughs> Somebody would try to say, it's very easy to make comparisons like, oh, Kandoro is a, is a Trevor Noah or is a Dave yeah. Chappelle kind of comedian. He's <laughs> like, uh, so because of that, I'm going to critique his performance based on how I've seen a Dave yeah. Chappelle perform. Which is, bro, comedians all over the world are saying the same thing. The same thing. Yep. <laughs> we are all talking about fatherhood. We are all talking about being in relationships. We're all talking about the politics. politics. Of that day. But everybody is trying to bring their own perspective to it. Yeah. No one can critique that and say like, oh, because Dave Chappelle did this or because so-and-so next door did this. Comedy can be judged by how it made you feel. That's all you can do. Yeah. That's all you can do. Yeah. If it didn't make you laugh, <laughs> judge it based on that. If yeah, it made it's, you it's, laugh, therefore it's not for me. It can't be judged based <laughs> off. It's not a. It's very different from movie. Movies have genres. Yeah. Like you know, it's yeah. a, this is a witchcraft movie. So based on this is a horror movie. This is a romantic comedy. All those things have a formula. Comedy doesn't have a formula, because just, I'll give you an example. Hassan yeah. Minaj, I don't know if you're familiar with Hassan Minaj. No, no, no. Uh, Hassan Minaj, you know, put me on. <laughs> pretty popular comedian, used to be on The Daily Show as a correspondent, uh, has a Netflix show, had a Netflix show called yeah. The Patriot Act. Uh, pretty successful comedian. Just had a Netflix stand up come out. The first line, first few lines in that show, is talking about how. Like, no highs, no nothing. Just go straight into how he and his wife were struggling to have a baby because he was infertile or he had low sperm count or whatever it is. Yeah. Deeply personal. <laughs> Deeply personal. 
your critique can't then be about do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Do you get it? Like in my last show, I'm talking about my father. I'm talking about my you know my my father's alcohol days and being broke and all these things. There is a funny spin to it, but these are real issues. I'm not talking yeah. about anyone's parents. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't then. I remember reading a. Uh, I remember reading a review about how uh, I need to go watch. Somebody was saying I need to go watch Skumba. Uh, how Skumba <laughs> performs. I was like Skumba. <laughs> <laughs> Skumba. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like it's 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 almost like. When, uh, <laughs> yo, that's like laughably disrespectful, man. It's, yo, it's so wild. The thing that it's like when, uh, man, I, I I was really at a loss for words. I need to find that because because <laughs> I think there's I need to find that review and just get motivated again. Because, yeah. If, if you do, please send it to me. I'd, yeah. I'd love to see it, and and also with uh, critique is just. Uh, I think for me, um, critique, especially nowadays, um, critique is a is a pretty tricky thing for me because I'm a very like vocal person. Yeah. Um, I have very strong feelings about things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> things that are for me. Yeah. Are for me. Yeah. Things yeah. that are not. Yeah. Are just not. Yeah. I I didn't balance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and. But what doing uh, what we are doing here at Untold uh, does, <clears throat> it humbles you in the sense that uh, once you're in the field, um, you have a different level of respect and yeah. appreciation for like how hard it is yeah. to do things. Exactly. And you approach, so even if it's not my craft, mm. I approach it in a, mm. getting videos out yeah. and, and refining our craft. Bro, even the even the ladies that are doing like YouTube vlogs, ooh, fantastic! Man. You know, like it's that's a different strategy of Zoom content that's you just know, doing so I would, much. But also, it gets disrespected so much. You know, people will be it like, does. "Oh, you're just recording videos off your phone," or you like, <laughs> like that I go back to their phone if it's that simple. <laughs> just to be able to <laughs> to story tell. Just to be able to put together a convincing, a compelling piece of 10 minutes, 8 minutes, whatever. Oh, guys, this is my day. This is what, 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 what. And, and retain a person through that. I think art. It's, <laughs> it's art. Just to, because it looks, like, it looks like just a video. That, but it's storytelling. That person has yep. to figure out like, oh, this is how I'm going to start this video. This is how I'm going to end it. That storytelling is also reinforced in the editing. Yep. This is what comes first. Well, we're going to put a time lapse here, or we're going to condense this and just add yeah. a little. All those and those guys things. handle their own distribution. Yes, like um, user acquisition. Well, calling it user acquisition then sounds so like complex. You know, but yeah. where do I get my audience and yeah. stuff? They're handling all of that. So it's, it's and someone it's, is like, yeah, yeah, I could. Someone think. side eyes it. You're like, man, <laughs> let's not even get into that too much. <laughs> Because, yeah, Twitter and, and just social media and people are just something you can explore for a long time. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about one more thing and then, yeah. you know, I, I, I let you go. Yeah. Um, you're the brains and presenter for propaganda. Um, you touched on propaganda being a different shade of Kandoro. Right. Um, still funny. Mm. But I would say a bit more serious, um, <clears throat> a bit more, I want to choose my words like very carefully, a bit more, um, not intentional. <sighs> Let's go with serious for now. It's, yeah. a bit, it's, it's, it's maybe the more serious show, yeah. the more serious side of Kandoro we've been yeah. ex exposed to. And so I've always wondered, um, with that, right, um, with propaganda, what problem are you trying to solve in, in this phase of, of, of your career and with that show particularly? Uh, I think I touched on it earlier. Uh, yeah. But if you see, like, Mukoma Bruce and propaganda are like a direct contradiction of each other, you know? P explain it to me. I'll, so I'll catch on. Mukoma Bruce, Mukoma Bruce, the thinking behind it was just, I just want to make something silly. Yeah. I just want to make something <laughs> fun, yeah. you know? 
because prior to that, my career had almost existed in a very serious box. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, <clears throat> Magamba TV, the deeply satirical, you know, yeah. I was coming from, you know, uh, you know, being the head writer on The Week and whatever, all the other Magamba TV projects, be it the animation, be it, you know. So, and then Saturday in the morning, for all its nonsense, was still a very serious podcast. It had a whole section yeah. which focused on politics and, you know, the stand-ups itself, the 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 the, the, the shows, Conspiracy Theories, Prodigal Pro Son, they have deep, that. very heavily political stuff. Yeah. You know, they have that, you know, very serious, deep topics. Yeah. Um, and... You know, at some point, I think somebody was like, ah, can't do it, you know, it's <laughs> political satire. How hard can it be to, you know, yeah. you know. So, you know, I wanted to challenge myself, like, hey, man, am I going for the easy, let me see, am I as versatile as I think I am? Yeah. So, you know, Mkoma Bruce existed in that pocket of, I want to write something that, I want to introduce myself to a different audience. Yeah. Somebody might think, we might think propaganda, because Mkoma Bruce, we filmed it in the middle of propaganda season two. Yep. So wanted to you know, introduce myself to a new audience. Somebody who might think, mm, maybe propaganda is too serious and depressing for me. Yeah, uh, maybe <laughs> yeah because I just it can want, be like that want, a bit. Yeah, <laughs> I just want a, you know, a silly show, and I thought Superhero was you know, pretty universal enough topic Let's bring it to Zim. He doesn't have the magetsies of an yeah. Iron Man. He's just a guy with a cap. <laughs> and He's he not Captain around. Mufobi. <laughs> yeah. So you, if you Another see, fantastic show. part of the satire was actually removing all the bells and whistles from the Oh, yeah, Batman. man. Like, he's, he's so grounded. Yeah. Like, so, he's a broke Batman. Exactly. <laughs> So that was part of what the humor was like. Hey, man, like, what are you doing to Batman? Like, you know, we wanted it to be story driven. Exactly. Like, man, this guy's you know, down things, bad. You know, things like that. Where, like, hey, man, like, you know, it, it becomes very story driven. Yeah. So, Como uh, uh, Bruce existed the same way that propaganda exists to introduce me to a different audience. Yeah. You know, when you come to a show now, you expect a lot of, you know, Kandoro is capable of pulling off, pulling off mm. a silly, <laughs> you know, Bruce, Bruce Wayne, whatever, and can do this serious introspective stuff with propaganda. Yeah. And I, I mentioned it earlier, like propaganda was very, you know, legitimizing myself as yeah, yeah, somebody who gives a lot of thought to the things like and maybe to even go very NGOE, where it's, you know, it, it, it was a thing of trying to provide nuance to the arguments that we have on social media because yeah, some very... of the political arguments exist in, you know, Zanopi have bad, MDC yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, know? it's a very, it's a very you, hard you know, thing exactly. to separate ourselves yeah. from whatever biases we have. Yeah, so if you see every episode of Propaganda seeks to answer a specific question, it's a single issue show where we're saying like, okay, if we are saying Zanopi have rigged elections, how do they do it? Yeah. Do they actually rig elections? If you are saying, you know, MDC doesn't have a plan, what is the plan that they are what meant to have? <laughs> you know, what do young people want? You know, things like, you know, how do you register to vote? How do we, you know, uh, in the in the in the in the in the in the when we're talking about corruption or government communications, what are yeah. the things that we want? So it seeks to occupy a space where things that I would otherwise want to, uh, and it's not just myself, propaganda, we, we have a research team, you know, guys yeah. that help me figure yeah, out yeah, the, best, yeah, the best way to approach, <laughs> the best way to approach topics and conversations to say, oh, okay, uh, let's steer the conversation this way. So it's like-minded people who are saying, because when we, the way we set up propaganda is, it actually starts from a point of things that we don't know. And we're actually and curious, curious about. To, to find so it's out. not so much that oh we have this information <laughs> lying around. We're bringing Let's you. educate <laughs> the people. It's like, yeah. ha, huh. you know. Sometimes There's you notice gap. something. You notice something like something actually happens. Like, yo, there is an issue here. <laughs> yeah. And we can't pinpoint what the question is initially, but we want to talk about 
you know, government communications. Uh, you want to talk about government communications, but you're like, hmm. So as you formulate the question now, you enter the research stage where that question is now being supported by, oh, okay, is this something that other young people might not necessarily know? Yeah. You know, okay, now becomes more interesting. Like, okay, now it becomes a need. It grows into like, okay. We're, we're filling a gap. Yeah, this is very important. <clears throat> you know, if it's voter registration information, why yeah. is it important for young people yeah. or anyone to register to vote? You know, that's because there comes a time where individuals are like, ah, man, why should we register to vote? Yeah. You know, so half the, not a half, all the episodes <laughs> of propaganda have been episodes that I've been curious about. Yeah, that people in the, the research team have been curious about and we are, you know, seeking to answer those questions for each other. And hopefully we are also answering them for other, for people, other people that might, yeah. you, you know, not necessarily think like, hmm, you know what, I've always wanted this thing. So yeah, that's, that's, that's what propaganda is trying to do. Yeah, that's fantastic. And um, propaganda particularly is, is interesting to me in a very different sense because that's my obsession is just... Um, so much basic information yeah. is inaccessible, like yeah. outrightly. Like yeah. I'll ask you a question where you're supposed to Google it and find an answer, yeah. but impossible, you exactly. can't. Yeah. And, and so from that angle, it, it, it's brilliant work. But um, thank you so much for coming through. Thank you for um, having me, man. It's been an interesting seven years for you. Yeah. Um, interesting seven Coming years to seven, watch as well. Seven years. <laughs> Yeah. And, and that's an interesting trend. I was, I was saying this to someone yesterday, the person I interviewed yesterday. I was telling them that that's one of the patterns I see is five years, 10 years, 15 years, mm. is just how, how much people dedicate themselves yeah. to these journeys. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it gives you a sense of how much work there is to, do, to, to be done. But yeah, man, thank you so much. Uh, no, thank you, man. Good luck for the rest of uh, the year. Uh, yeah. Family meeting, are we, are we plugging that? Where can we get the tickets? Yeah. Uh, dates, whatever it is. Tickets are available on the website, uh, kinkandrollive.com. Yeah, we'll have that in the, in the description. Yeah, they're also available at Motor Republic, uh, Shumba Money in Newlands. Yeah. They're available at Celebration Center. In, okay. the, in the bookstore. Yeah. They are also available at Zim Adventures in the CBD. Uh, so yeah, you just have to go on my socials, pick wherever is most convenient for you. But yeah, uh, come through. Let's sell our celebration center. 3, what what dates are we working with? 24 <laughs> December. Uh, oh, that's the same as last time, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, yeah, fantastic. So. Let's, yeah. let's, let's do our pre-Christmas like that again yeah. this year. 24 December. And very excited about this one because this... I think this one might be the best of all three. I mean, ideally, because <laughs> yeah. you know the the, the 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 subject matter is matured, the performance is matured. Um, it's just a, it's like like you know the name implies. It's family meeting. Yeah. You know, we're discussing serious issues, but we're laughing while we're doing it. Yeah, it's a good time for everybody involved. You know, it's a show for all. All ages, you know. It's, it's safe no, for everyone. Yeah, it's the safe kids, for everyone. The, 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 the parents. Kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I saw someone ask you, I think, yesterday, and they were like, your parents or something like that, like, yeah. can they come through? I mean, <laughs> I always get worried when people ask me that. I'm like, when have you ever like, seen Like, what have you seen? <laughs> swear. I mean, like, when, when, what have you seen? Yeah, but also, but I guess we have, just to, we have to, to train yeah. our parents to, yeah. to get used to that form of expression. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah. But you never know. I think, I think we're going to have a good time. I yeah. hope so, man. I, I, I pray it happens like that. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, man.